Thank you, Madam Chair. You, you are now good. Thank good you. Good afternoon, everyone. It is 5.34 p.m. The regular meeting of the uh, University of Guam Board of Regents. Uh, it is Thursday, April 27, 2023. Um, with that, let's move on now to um, item 2.0 to the meeting minutes. Uh, uh, excuse me. Okay, I'm, I'm going to call the time now, 5.35 p.m. for the, um, the start of the meeting. So I'll just give you a couple minutes uh, before... Um, we um, approve the minutes. Do we have any other any questions, concerns, um, revisions? Madam Chair, may I make a motion to accept the minutes? Okay. Regent Malilai seconds. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. No discussion. Hearing none. Um, I'd like to take a, a roll call vote, um, beginning with. Um, Regent of Valencia. Aye. Regent Malilai. Regent Malilai, aye. Regent Diaz, aye. Vito, aye. Lana, aye. Okay, thank you. Um, um, the um, minutes are approved um, unanimously. Thank you. Okay, moving on to item 3.0, chairperson's remarks. So half a day, everyone, and welcome to our April regular meeting. As always, we appreciate everything everyone's doing to keep the mission of our university moving ahead. As we head towards the end of this kind of knock in 2023 semester, we look forward to another great commencement to celebrate our students' achievements as they move to their next chapters in their lives. I thank those regents in advance who were able to attend the commencement ceremony on May 21st at the UOG Calvo Field House. I also thank in advance all those who continue to work hard in organizing this ceremony. For those who have been on campus this month, you will notice that our Student Services Center is no longer standing and we are in the beginning stages of transforming buildings on our campus and we look to further updates from the physical facilities in today's meeting. We are getting closer to our WSUC accreditation review and visit and look forward to having more discussions and engagement at our next meeting in September, 2023 con con um, concerning this important review. As a reminder, I understand that UOG will still have its budget hearing on May 11th, 2 p.m. at the Congress building in Hagatnia. Stay tuned for any potential changes to this date. Otherwise, we look forward to addressing any concerns our senators may have and defend our budget so that our university can continue to support our students and their academic research and service successes. Last but not least, we are midstream in the presidential search process and we'll hear more updates later in 5.6 of our agenda. At this time, I do wanna acknowledge Dr. Kreitz for his services to date as this may be one of his last regular meetings as our president. Please join me in showing our appreciation for his accomplishments to date with a round of applause. And just a note, the search process is not over and he's still in charge as president as we have still have lots of work to do. <laughs> in the meantime, please note on your calendar that there will be a farewell ceremony for Dr. Price for us to formally thank him as well on May 12, 2.30 p.m. at the School of Business atrium area. Also, for the record, uh, Regent Valencia has been approved in writing by me to participate via Zoom. And that uh, concludes uh, my report. Um, next is item 4.0, the President's report, Dr. Price. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as per custom, I'll, I'll begin with the um, uh, in memoriam section to remember those members of the university community uh, who have uh, left us since our last 
regular meeting of the Board of Regents. Uh, first is uh, Peter Kansanitsa, Kansanitsa uh, brother of David Kansanitsa uh, of the Triton Store and Therese P. Kansanitsa with the Financial Aid Office. And we also lost Dr. Michael A. Wiley, retired faculty member in the psychology program in the 1990s. And we also lost Maria Babalta Perez Cruz, mother of Jane Cruz Mendiola, administrative assistant of the Cooperative Extension Outreach in the College of Natural and Applied Sciences, and also Jennifer Cruz Hanless, supply technician of the OG Army ROTC program in the College of Natural and Applied Sciences. I could ask for a moment of silence to remember these uh, members of our community who have done this. Thank you. So on to my uh, regular president's report. I, uh, my thanks to the eight regents who are able to make it to the uh, Association of Governing Boards of Colleges and Universities Conference in um, San Diego at the beginning of this month. Remarkable that that's this month that we were there. Um, that's the, the first time I think we've had so many regents attend. The first time I think we've ever attended that particular conference, and that was uh, the largest uh, group kind of training that we've had uh, for our board. And this builds on the the uh, ACCT trustees training that we had in Honolulu for uh, several members of the board. So um, thank you for the participation in that. I think we all got quite a bit out of it. And thanks also to the Presidential Search Committee and the Board of Regents for an excellent search process so far and the distinguished set of finalists. I'm, I'm really honored to the, with the high quality of the candidates to succeed me, so that's very exciting. And uh, we've all taken pains to ensure uh, a clean uh, presidential search process. And so several administrators and I have avoided even the slightest appearance of conflict of interest. So that means other people have picked up the slack, um, uh, you know, to make sure that there's, um, uh, you know, complete separation. And so uh, thanks to many people involved in making this happen. So uh, the whole uh, process uh, moving so smoothly. So thanks to Dave Okada, Anthony Camacho, Norm Analista, Joe Gumitautau, Jim Hollier, Kayleen Roberto, uh, Vince Stella Cruz, Jonas Macapinlack, uh, Chris Mabayag, Tess Duenas, Carm Bloss, and Cynthia Guerrero, and others who have supported the Presidential Search Committee, and of course to the members of the committee itself, <laughs> um, the PSC Chair and Regent uh, Pete Diaz, Board of Regents Chair Lisa Provito, Regent Roland Certeza, former Board Chair Tony Sanford, uh, and also uh, Sunny Ada, Dr. Hiro, uh, Hiroshina, Dr. Chris Garcia Santos, and uh, Student Government Association President Keona Rivera. Uh, one of our strategic initiatives uh, of the Parahula Strategic Plan is for UOG to be a model for operations. And I think this Board of Regents has, by its commitment to training, with both the Honolulu Trustees Training and the AGB Training in San Diego. Um, have shown a determination to be a model for governing boards in Guam and the whole region. The professionalism and smoothness of the PSC process is further indication of the growing maturity of our Board of Regents uh, and, and our various processes. Now a bit of updates from me. You have, you have more detail, of course, in the board book and other various reports that we'll have at today's meeting, uh, but let me highlight a few things. Um, our WASC uh, accreditation process, uh, thanks especially to Dr. Enriquez and Dr. Santos Bamba, our ABED accreditation process, and thanks to Dr. Udin and the, and the engineering faculty, and the Carnegie uh, community engagement process, so thanks to Jim Hollier and Pete Parsinas. All those are on track, as we expected during this, uh, this semester. Also, the faculty union contract negotiations are underway, and so thanks to the members of the bargaining teams. And thanks to many hands responsible for garnering uh, over these uh, several years, over $50 million in external support, including from USDA, EDA, DOD, the Guam legislature, and the governor's office. Uh, and we're now, because thanks of all, for all of that support, we're in the middle of seven significant building projects. Three are completed now. Of course, the Guam Cultural Repository, which is now staffed and preparing to receive materials. Uh, the new double science lab in addition uh, in, 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 in an addition at the science hall, 
and the purchase and renovation of the EPSCOR house. So those are the three that are completed so far. And of course, you know of the four big building projects that are moving ahead. Um, so as our, our chair mentioned, the Student Success Center is now rubble. So thanks to uh, Randy Wiegand, uh, Glenn Leon Guerrero, Zenon Bellinger and their teams in preparation for construction of the new, new facility. And the nursing annex will begin soon and uh, followed by the uh, School of Engineering and Water and Environmental Research. Um, in other news, our 14th annual conference on island sustainability was a great success with over 450 attendees. And also I was able to host a presidential summit, including college and university presidents from our whole region, uh, plus uh, uh, um, American Samoa Community College and Jeju National University in Korea. And the conference highlighted the great hard work of the G3 initiative, the Guam, uh, Guam Green Growth Initiative, which I have the honor of co-chairing with the governor and uh, also CIS and C Grant Director, Dr. Austin Shelton co-chairs the steering committee with the Lieutenant Governor. And so if you haven't seen it yet, the G3 dashboard is a great resource for people all over Guam uh, to see how we're doing in sustainable development and climate action. And then for other news, I'd like to just call attention uh, to the Big G Weekly that comes out in email as a way to keep up with what's going on at the university. And now moving to, as, a, as our chair mentioned, our communication strategy for our budget, or the advocacy for our budget. Um, so we've uh, had a whole strategy laid out and we're in the middle of that strategy. So we've so far had two uh, opinion pieces in the, um, in the newspapers, uh, one by me and one by Dr. Enriquez. And upcoming, we have um, uh, uh, one uh, op-ed that's focused on the research enterprise and then one from our Student Government Association President, Fiona Rivera. We've so far had 110 social media posts on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter, uh, advocating for our $42 million request. Uh, this includes spotlights on faculty, students, and workforce development, and directly related to our budget communication strategy. We've had 86,000 impressions. We've had 6,800 6, engagements, 3,400 link clicks, and 14,800 video views for this uh, set of um, social media uh, advancing our, um, our, our advocacy for the budget. News covers from coverage from regional sources between uh, March 1st and today includes 26 articles directly dealing with the $42 million budget request, 289 articles total across all mentions of UOG, and we will focus on students heading into the May 11th a budget hearing, Chair mentioned. Two wrinkles that we have to be aware of. Um, uh, two things to this to be aware of uh, that, that have come up during the budget advocacy. One is the proposal for the 22% raise for the general pay plan. Um, has complicated a little bit our media efforts as well as distracting some attention from our budget requests. So that's something just to be aware of in your continued advocacy. Um, and also the uh, UOG's budget news will also be competing with the news, of course, on the presidential search. So just to know that there's, there's potential for a bit of distraction. We've had uh, seven meetings with uh, individual senators on the budget. Um, and we have uh, seven senators that, necessarily the same set, <laughs> who are on the record as uh, openly supporting the $42 million request. So we, we, we at least get to eight and then <laughs> get all, all of them to support. Um, so thanks to our regents and students with a special shout out to student Lee Samana and SGA uh, Treasurer Austin Fortuno for their excellent remarks to the legislative budget staff and all those students and regents who've connected with uh, senators so far. And I would urge particular focus on Senator Joe San Augustine to urge him to include the $42 million in the request in the initial budget draft. Um, it's much easier in the process if it's in the initial draft rather than having it at a later time. As Chair Provito mentioned, our budget hearing is tentatively scheduled for the afternoon of Thursday, May 11th. And we'll keep you apprised. There's, it's not uncommon for that to change, but, we'll, but it's still scheduled for and of course, it would strengthen our position to have regents and students, especially uh, present in force. 
As Chair Provito also mentioned, um, my service as the 11th president of UAG doesn't end until August, but since this is my last uh, president's report to a regularly scheduled uh, Board of Regents meeting, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all the members of the board who are now serving or have served over these five years of my term for the high honor and great opportunity of leading UOG during these interesting and sometimes challenging years. And of course, I want to express my deep appreciation for all the faculty, staff, students, and administrators I've had the privilege to work with during this eventful half decade. I feel like we've accomplished a great deal and that UOG is on track for a bright future. We managed the pandemic with comparatively minimal um, on-campus transmission of the virus, and we led as a partnership institution in helping Guam be one of the leading jurisdictions in vaccination rates and in limiting the spread and lethality of the disease. We secured the $50 million in, in funding and, and launched the first significant building projects in over 15 years. And despite cuts in our appropriation, we've improved our maintenance processes and support for our existing facilities. We've been awarded record levels of prestigious federal research funding, now placing us up, um, among the top 32% of US universities. Just uh, recently, we were saying it's top 35%, now we're top 32%, and advancing our aim to be recognized as a research university centered in island wisdom. Uh, we've enriched the student experience with new academic programs like the BS in civil engineering and the Master of Accountancy as well as adding the Triton Advising Center, the Welcome Center, the Peace Corps Prep Program, the OG Drone Corps, eSports, new athletic teams and activities, and we've earned the military-friendly campus designation. And we've improved our retention and graduation rates to help our students compete, complete their degrees and excel in their careers in graduate and professional programs. We professionalized our operations and updated countless policies and procedures, helping to reduce our legal and fiscal risks bringing UOG more in line with the highest standards of American higher education. And we've developed new sources of revenue and new ways of conducting our operations to serve our community and to strengthen our bottom line. My wife, Patty, and I have often said that Guam is the best, most comfortable, and most welcoming place we've ever lived. And we've lived in 11 different places uh, during our 36-year marriage so far. So we have some experience with different places. And we were both so happy to be Tritons, and we look forward to staying connected and contributing to the future success of UOG as we go off to figure out how to do that. And now I'm pleased to report that Dr. Perry Pangolinan from the University Libraries is here with us today with his wife, Melissa. And Dr. Pangolinan would like to express his thanks to the Board of Regents, and I'm glad to offer him that opportunity with the Chair's approval. Please do so. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Good evening, good uh, evening, uh, President Price and uh, members of the Board of Regents. Um, I, I thank you so much for this time, uh, for allowing me to speak uh, just for a couple of minutes to express my appreciation uh, for the uh, tenure and promotion process. That was a very tedious process and it was very hard. And um, I would have to say that, of course, I can't, um, that process I couldn't, was, I was not able to do that on my own. And so I want to just recognize a few people that helped me along. And first of all, I would like to express my appreciation for my wife, Melissa, that's helped me in, in this endeavor. And I put her through a lot, but she, she helped me to, uh, you know, get through this uh, process. But at the same time, I, I want to recognize also my, my colleagues, the, the faculty and staff here, uh, specifically at the RFP library. They have been very diligent in helping me uh, to, uh, to succeed in, in my career. Um, also, I want to express a deep appreciation for my, my boss, uh, Dr. Monique Story, uh, who has been, uh, been very supportive of my endeavors uh, with my community service, with my research, and of course, uh, providing, uh, doing what I can to uh, provide services to uh, the campus community and of course, the uh, community here on Guam. Um, also, I, I would like to express appreciation for uh, Dr. Anita Enriquez. I'm not sure if she's here uh, today, either in person or in Zoom, but uh, thank you so much, Dr. Enriquez, for your support too. And then also, I would like to express my appreciation for our president, Dr. Price. Um, thank you, sir, for, for helping me and supporting me, uh, but also um, not just in this process, but also I would like to personally thank you for uh, leading this university through the COVID period. It was a most a challenging time for the university, but you're able to help the university move forward and 
thank you so much for that. But at the same time, uh, I wish you well in all your endeavors and your retirement for you and your, and your wife. And then lastly, I express my deepest appreciation for the Board of Regents. Of course, without your signature, it's not going to happen. So uh, thank you so much uh, for all your help. And I will do my very best to, uh, to support the mission of the, unit of the uh, library, at the same time to support the mission of the university. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, your tenure, tenure position is uh, well-deserved. Congratulations. Okay, with that, um, I'd like to move on to um, item 5.0 of the agenda, uh, reports from standing committees, uh, beginning with 5.1, uh, the SART committee, uh, Regent Lily Lai. Thank you, Madam Chair. The SASARD committee met on April 19 at approximately one o'clock at the President's Conference Room. A quorum was present and uh, Regent Valencia attended via Zoom. Under committee update, uh, we were given the graduating, uh, graduation data from the Admissions and Record Office, if you can see that little page that they gave us. Arlene Leon Guerrero was present and she did present the data to us. 309 students will be graduating. Um, graduation rate is down from um, uh, 335 to 309. School of Engineering will be graduating to students only from seven of last year. And the um, Education School of Education will be graduating 19 as opposed to 28, again from last year. Um, and that's but that was her brief uh, report. Um, Dr. Enriquez did have things to say about the uh, retention rates, graduation rates, and so did Dr. Kreis. And if Dr. Kreis would like to say something, he can at this time. Thank you, Regent Malila. I would just add that uh, we, uh, over the, the period of time, we've, uh, since 2016, I think, we've increased the retention and graduation rates in a significant way from the mid 20s percent to the low 40s. It's a bit dipped in the upper 30s at the moment, but um, that's a remarkable change in a short time. But we've, uh, moving that upward is a really high priority, and a higher priority actually than the sheer number of uh, students involved. Dr. Enriquez Borja, would you, or Borja, would you or Borja Enriquez, would you like to add anything to this? I know we couldn't hear you before because our the Zoom wasn't working properly. Uh, yes, I, I'm just, uh, you know, the measure of student success uh, has to do with uh, high student achievement, uh, high student retention, as well as high graduation rates. And uh, in, in years past, the target did, uh, graduation rate had always been 30%. And I decided to move that, that targeted goal up to 50%. So in, in less than five years, we managed to move uh, the uh, graduation rate from 26% to 41.2%. We monitor the reten the fall to fall retention rate for uh, from freshman to sophomore year uh, in terms of the cohort uh, metric. What we do is we use that as a predictor to uh, how well we are going to do with regard to the graduation rate. So uh, we knew we knew uh, when the retention rate from fall to fall from freshman to sophomore year dipped that that uh, the uh, graduation rate uh, as a predictor was going to go down. So we use a lot of wraparound support in in uh, trying to uh, get the deans to contact students who had not registered for the new uh, semester to find out what their needs are and the reasons for them not registering as a method of trying to get them to register in order to improve that graduation rate. So there's a lot of, there are a lot of different efforts that are engaged in that process, uh, a lot of innovative types of initiatives that unfolded. And so we're still on track, uh, Madam Chair, to try to move that to at least 50%. The national average is roughly about 60%. But because the University of Guam is an open admission uh, institution, we take everybody. And because of that, uh, you know, they may not necessarily be college ready, 
uh, it, it really uh, uh, forces us to do much, much more than the typical university to try to do everything we can to help those who we consider at risk in order to get them uh, to the finish line. So uh, college affordability remains part of that uh, equation with regard to helping to improve overall retention and graduation rates. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Enriquez. Um, do you have any questions, Regents? Do you have any questions? If not, um, four resolutions were presented to the committee. First is resolution number 23-08, relative to approving the Fondam Nahan 2023 commencement graduate listing. Regent Malilai moves to approve this resolution. Can we get a second? Regent Diaz, second. Thank you. Um, any discussion? As you can see, uh, Madam Chair, uh, from the agenda, the resolution went through a review process and was endorsed by Dr. Enriquez and Dr. Price. Um, okay. It's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. The commencement will be on May 21st, 2020. Okay, thank you. Um, with that, um, I would like to call a roll call vote on uh, the resolution. Um, Regent Malilai votes aye. Regent Diaz, aye. Regent Leon Guerrero, aye. Regent DeKeever, aye. Regent Provito, aye. Regent Naholoa, aye. Regent Laksamana, aye. Regent, Regent Valencia, aye. aye. Okay, thank you. Um, so the um, motion carries unanimously. Okay. The, the second resolution um, presented to the committee is resolution number 23-09, relative to approving the ethical recruitment of students policy. Regent Malilai moves to approve this resolution. Do we have a second? Regent Diaz, aye. Okay, thank you. Discussion? Again, uh, this uh, resolution went through the review process and is endorsed by uh, President Kreis and President Enriquez. Um, Dr. Um, Mr. Uh, Mark Duarte was kind enough to give me his bullet points of his presentation. Um, the UOG participates in the uh, DOD tuition assistance program along with 2,500 other institutions of higher learning. UOG has signed the Department of Defense Voluntary Education Partnership Memor Memorandum of Understanding. And to continue to participate in this program, um, we, uh, UOG, had to ensure that certain policies are in place at this university. And the first policy is under the Resolution 23-09, which is the ethical recruitment of students uh, basically to ban inducements, including any gratuity, favor discounts, entertainment, hospitality, loan, trans transportation, lodgings, and meal uh, for the purpose of securing enrollment of service members or obtaining access to tuition assistance funds and to refrain from providing any commission or bonus or other incentive payments. Also to refrain from high pressure recruitment tactics for the purpose of securing service member enrollments. This policy or this resolution um, before the Board of Regents is the first of two policies that we must adopt in compliance of this program. Thank you, Regent Lee Lai. Um, with that, um, again, I'd like to ca uh, call for a roll, roll call vote. Regent Malilai, aye. Regent Diaz, aye. Regent Leon Guerrero, aye. Regent Ikiver, aye. Regent Provito, aye. Regent Naholoa, aye. Regent Maximana, aye. Regent Valencia, aye. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, motion carries unanimously. The third resolution is res resolution number 23-10, relative to approving the readmissions for military service members policy. Regent Mulilai moves to approve this resolution. Second. Regent Diaz, second. Okay, thank you, Regent Diaz. Huh? Again, this resolution has undergone the review process. Um, 
approval of this resolution will fulfill the compliance of the uh, Department of Education, uh, Department of uh, uh, Department of Defense uh, policy. Um, the, the readmission for military service member policy, if you look at the material that was given, um, there are four uh, uh, policy includes like four areas, which is eligibility, notification of intent to return, tuition and fees, and the readmission requirements. Uh, again, um, it is self-explanatory and was given to the members prior to the meeting. Okay, thank you. Um, with that, I'd like to call for a roll call vote. Regent Malilai, aye. Regent Diaz, aye. Regent Leongarao, aye. Regent McKeever, aye. Regent Provido, aye. Regent Naholoa, aye. Regent Laksamana, aye. Regent Valencia, aye. Thank you. And with that, motion carries unanimously. Uh, the fourth resolution is resolution number 23-11 relative to awarding the honorary degree of Master of Micronesian Traditional Knowledge to Baskus Mark. I'm sure you've read the resolution and because accomplish accomplishments and contributions to the community is very admirable. Um, we wholeheartedly supported conferring uh, this honorary. Oh, excuse degree. me, we didn't really like. Let's make um, oh, a motion. point of order. Uh, make a motion I'm first sorry. before we. I'm, I'm sorry to discussion. <laughs> I move to approve resolution number uh, 23-11. We did the hollow motion. Okay, now you can just get into discussion. <laughs> okay, short of repeating what has been written and the resolution that you have in front of you. Um, again, uh, Mr. Mark's uh, accomplishments and contributions to the. Uh, community is very admirable um, and our committee has wholeheartedly supported conferring this honorary degree to Mr. Mark. Dr. Kreis had really lovely things to say about Mr. Mark and his accomplishments. Would you like to repeat them? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Sure. Um, so yes, yeah, so uh, Baskus Mark is one of the uh, very important figures in uh, our Island Wisdom uh, initiative. And so uh, he was nominated by uh, Professor uh, Melissa Taipano, who was uh, uh, inducted in as a master navigator uh, in a remarkable ceremony, one of the first formal ceremonies under our Island Wisdom um, Initiative, which uh, Dr. Enriquez has been uh, leading with um, Dr. Manute's story as well. Um, so as you can see, uh, uh, Mr. Mark has um, you know, over 200 voyages, 22 in command, um, trained 110 navigator apprentices on uh, in three different island communities. So he's a, a really important figure to our Island Wisdom Initiative. And so uh, I think this is a very appropriate way. And of course, the University of Guam, the University of Guam is the only institution that awards this, this particular degree, this honorary degree of Master of Micronesian Traditional Knowledge. So, um, so it's an important award to a, an important recipient. Um, Dr. Enriquez might be next. Dr. Enriquez? Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, being no further discussion, then I'd like to call for a roll call vote. Regent Malilai, aye. Regent Diaz, aye. Regent Leongararo, aye. Regent McKeever, aye. Regent Provido, aye. Regent Naholoa, aye. Laksamana, aye. Regent Valencia, aye. Okay, thank you. Um, motion carries unanimously. Okay, thank you, Regent Balilai. I think that concludes your report. Moving on to item 5.2, uh, Academic Personnel and Tenure Committee, uh, Regent Leon Guerrero. Thank you, Chair. The Academic Personnel and Tenure Committee did meet on April 20th. Quorum was met via Zoom and in-person participation. We had two resolutions up for discussion, the first of which we'll present here and the second, which will be covered under Regent Diaz's um, Physical Facilities Committee. Uh, so I move to put forth resolution number 23-12 relative to awarding Professor Emeritus, uh, Emerita of Japanese language status to Dr. Toyoto King. Okay. Second. Can we get a second? Regent Mulliwai seconds. Thank you. Um, discussion? Uh, this um, 
nomination was submitted by Dean James Selman of the College of Liberal Arts and Social Science. Um, the, the criteria for Professor Emeritus will include 15 years service as a faculty member, attainment of tenure at the associate professor or professor rank, and significant contributions to the University of Guam. Dr. King has over 29 years of service as a faculty member at the university, also attained the rank of tenured professor, and has made several distinguished contributions throughout her term with the university. Um, the Academic Personnel and Tenure Committee has endorsed this packet as well as the president and the SDP provost. And so we put forth this for the full board for approval. Thank you. Okay, with that, no further discussion. I'd like to call for a roll call vote. Regent Malilai, aye. Regent Diaz, aye. Regent Leongaro, aye. Regent McKeever, aye. Regent Bobito, aye. Regent Mahalua, aye. Regent Hoxamana, aye. Regent Valencia, Thank aye. Thank you, everyone. Uh, motion carries unanimously. And that is all we have. Okay, thank you, uh, Regent Young Guerrero. Uh, moving on to item 5.3, Physical Facilities Committee, um, Regent Diaz. Thank you, Madam Chair. The uh, Physical Facilities Committee met on April 19th, uh, 2023 at 4 p.m. at the President's Conference Room with a quorum present. Facilities Management and Services provided updates. Uh, first on the USDA projects that includes the School of Engineering and Student Services Center. Uh, we last reported that the interim financing agreement with Greater Nevada Union was ongoing. Uh, the committee was briefed that due to the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, Greater Nevada Union could not proceed with our interim financing. But the USDA did grant EOG a waiver from the interim financing and will be financing the construction of these projects. Uh, USDA and EOG lawyers are working to finalize loan documents. Uh, Student Services Center, no vote changes. Uh, the design is still at 70% um, as reported at our last meeting. However, most of the building process, uh, building permit process uh, is complete. Uh, the Department of Parks and Recreation requires a section 106 archaeological permit. Uh, you see the demolition of the existing building was completed in April 13, still ongoing as well. Um, and the subdivision process is in um, subdivision process is in progress. We did hear some updates uh, earlier today that um, the survey has been submitted to the Department of Land Management, uh, and that's needed. Um, and that will be the last approved map that's needed for parceling out, and this will help again in the closing of those loan documents. Um, the School of Engineering, uh, the design has advanced 95 percent from 70 percent last we met. Most of the building permit process is also complete. Uh, they also require Section 106 archaeological. Um, as far as the US EDA projects, that includes the Wary and School of Alcanics. Um, some notable updates we are awaiting EDA review and approval for the mortgage documents. Uh, FMS is anticipating the bids to be issued first week of May. Um, some other uh, projects around the campus, um, if you notice, there's been some some progress with construction of sidewalks at the entrance of the university. Um, and so essentially um, they're trying to build safer walking paths. So you see a lot of uh, people use the university for exercise, trying to make that a little bit safer. Um, and also they have plans on um, moving uh, the entrance sign because folks do take photos there and some safety concerns with folks stepping into the um, roadways. And so I think there's been a plan to shift it that folks can take photos safely. Um, as far as life cycle and, and preventive maintenance, uh, the air conditioning systems, the ACs that were purchased with the Higher Education Emergency Relief Funds at 500,000 for 14 EOG buildings. Um, the contractor has started installing those units uh, in February and are about 65% complete. Uh, EOG has um, a maintenance service agreement with this contractor. So over the next five years. Uh, the Marine Lab AC system was awarded to um, Sunhaze and Dia. We're awaiting units uh, from the manufacturer and they expect their arrival in July. Here. As far as generators, um, Pacific Federal Management, which was awarded the 600,000 kilowatt generator, 
uh, to support the RFA Library, Micronesian Area Research Center, Global Learning and Engagement, and the Computer Center that Generator is now on island. And installation should be complete by June this year. Uh, campus lighting, 100% uh, of all the outside lights have been replaced with LED or solar LED units. Um, this should reduce UOD's energy consumption by 27,000 uh, per year. All three dorms, internal and external lighting have been replaced with LED bulbs. Uh, the Siemens project um, found that uh, this 2.6 million investment in campus lighting by energy efficient lighting with about 280,000 cost savings over a 10 year period, simple payback period is 1.3. Some additional benefits from some of these improvements has had uh, training costs invested in FMS staff three years contractor maintenance and lighting specifications that will be incorporated into EOG's building and maintenance standards. As far as FMS personnel, there are no updates. Um, we still have vacancies for supervisors for electrical building maintenance and carpentry. Um, our 16 FMS employees are seeking trade certificates at the Trades Academy. And we still have vacancies for trades for carpentry, electrical, and ground. Um, we do have a uh, architecture and Engineering IDIQ, that's with RIM Architects. They were selected for a five-year contract. Um, their contract is still with legal, as was reported to the committee. Uh, the scope that this uh, firm will provide to the university is updating the master plan. That will include C grant and EPS4 facilities, rezoning the campus and subdividing property as needed, and developing the new building system. Um, Going back to the cost reduction project with Siemens, uh, we have ordered 1.4 million that we paid in reserve funds. Right now we do have documents uh, for the funding that are still with AG's office. But some updates on some of the phase one project updates. So classroom LED lighting, um, that began installation at the SBA building. Uh, lighting will take about two to three weeks to complete. Uh, the rest of the indoor uh, lighting will start in May 8 and end in mid July. Uh, building envelope materials have been arriving this week. Installation will start on April 24th. Um, this portion will be completed at the end of June. Building automation for the SBA and School of Education buildings. Um, this is monitoring for AC units. Um, those materials um, arrived uh, for the LG building. Installation will begin May and June timeframe, and the School of Education will begin in July. And also, building AC damper controls are currently being installed. Um, and also, there are they are applying uh, corrosion uh, materials to the AC, uh, some of the AC equipment to to extend the life of those. Uh, the installations of the uh, solar power uh, solar panels at SBA building. Um, and restoring existing panels should start in July, pending material availability. As far as water conservation, um, at 20 sites, materials uh, are expected to arrive in May. Installation should begin in May and could be completed in June. Um, and 20 sites will also receive water conservation upgrades of efficient toilets, urinals, faucets, shower heads. Um, for funding, UOG has a 1.2 million grant to begin the work, uh, but UOG is still, again, working on securing the funding for the 4.5 million portion. Um, I think we're still waiting for paperwork, approval from the AG and government approval. Uh, for safety, um, security updates, um, the committee was briefed that our fire systems, uh, most of the fire systems are certified and in compliance. There are four systems um, that are in need of repair and are pending arrival of equipment. Um, all our elevators have been inspected and they are working on certification. All the ADA, ADA doors are fully operational. Um, they also did a assessment on campus signage. Uh, they are working on a purchase order for the needed signs. And as far as striping, um, most of the crosswalks have been painted um, and they are looking at purchasing additional paint. We last reported that there were a couple of break-ins in buildings in the new circle area. Um, an additional security detail was implemented and is working. 
In fact, the perpetrators of the break-in in the circle were eventually caught and some of the items, stolen items were returned. Student security force um, is now started. They have four students that are now being onboarded. Uh, as far as UOG Green, we did receive a um, update during our meeting, but I know that there was a recent sustainability conference that went well. So congrats on Dr. Austin Shelton's work for, for helping put that together. As far as IT infrastructure, our CEO Vince De La Cruz briefed the committee that the last system that was impacted by the ransomware board, um, some of the cyber security improvements um, that he's worked been working on, obviously, is awareness training with the workforce at the university. Um, Multi-factor authentication has begun to roll out, and more users are planned to be added. Um, other items being implemented is conducting a IT penetration test um, and incorporating larger enterprise firewall. Uh, CL also uh, is assessing cabling in the various colleges, and we'll be providing input into the UOG building standards and into the new buildings that are constructed. Okay. And that concludes my like, report. Thank you very much. Yes. Oh, no, we do have a couple of um, motion or resolutions. Uh, so I move to uh, bring resolution number 23-13 relative to approving the naming of the Yogi School of Health Academic Program and Facility after Dr. Dr. Margaret Perez Hattori Kuchima. A second. Regent Nohulua, a second. Thank you. Uh, discussion? This motion um, obviously came about um, as Dr. Um, Hattori Uchima uh, died unexpectedly on Monday, December 26, 2022, while employed as dean of the school. Um, the university does have a naming policy. Um, and again, this policy looks to recognize and align um, folks that, that really made contributions that align with EOG's vision, mission, direction, and other relevant factors. Um, and this also includes opportunities in memory of a person. So this resolution um, obviously seeks to recognize um, Dr. Um, Hattori Uchima for her contribution, not only to the university, um, but also to the community at large. Um, <clears throat> so Dr. Hattori Uchima has been recognized for many contributions, um, for her untiring and significant contributions to Guam's healthcare uh, process systems, providing expert professional guidance in physical physically participating in immunizing community, including the homeless population, while considering her full-time job as Dean of School of Health, teaching student nurses, and creatively accelerating graduation rates without sacrificing uh, quality graduates. Um, she has also been recognized for her um, administrative duties as such as uh, being recognized as Supervisor of the Year, for outstanding people management skills, significant contribution achievement as a supervisor commitment to professional standards and responsive customer service and community needs. She's also been recognized nationally for her professional and personal dedication to the health and well-being of communities in Guam and throughout Micronesia. She's been affiliated with many professional organizations. Um, she has, in her academic field, has led authored and co-authored 79 peer-reviewed journals. Um, Dr. Atori Uchima is among healthcare leaders who worked tirelessly on the front lines to save lives during COVID-19 at hit Guam in early 2000, 2020. Taking shifts as a nurse, helping organize nurses island-wide with the dedication of the nursing facility, launching the temporary nursing assistance program to help address critical shortage of nursing. She also devoted her life to the University of Guam by enhancing the quality of life of the community and the region. This resolution has been uh, proposed by the RUOG president and senior VP and provost, and it hope, 
also been reviewed by the DOG School of Health Academic Program. Thank, thank, thank you, Regan Diaz. Okay. And certainly, as uh, Dr. Um, um, has such outstanding leadership, and this is um, such an appropriate um, gesture to her legacy. Uh, so, with that, um, I would like to call a roll call vote. Madam Chair, can I just um, make an amendment to this resolution? Oh, I just okay. also want to note that this resolution was also discussed and pushed forward and reviewed by the Personal Academic and Tenure Committee as well. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's continue with the vote now. Regent Malilai, aye. Regent Diaz, aye. Regent Leon Guerrero, aye. Regent McKeever, aye. Regent Perbito, aye. Regent Holowa, aye. Anna, aye. Regent Valencia, aye. Thank you, everyone. Uh, motion carries unanimously. Okay, I think that concludes your report, um, Regent Diaz. Yes, yeah. Okay, let's move on now to um, item five investment committee. Um, Regent McKeever. Thank you. Um, Chairwoman Lisa Pavito, um, the investment committee met on April 20th and we did have quorum. The Triton Investment Club um, presented its activities and they have set a goal of reaching their investment to about $40,000 by the end of the quarter. Their holdings consisted of mostly tech stocks and some blue chip stocks. They had about a 10.8% year to date return. And um, they also gave $6,000 to um, the business class, uh, BA421, which had four groups investing $1,500 each in the account. Also, Amanda um, Dima from Raymond James and Associates reviewed the performance of the inter internal endowment. Um, she, is, she had a report that showed uh, near the benchmark rates, some are up, some are down, but we are happy to see that there is recovery in the markets. Um, the S&P, uh, the Raymond James analysts are saying that S&P is to reach 4,400 by the end of the year, but still expect volatility between now and then. Most of the funds were, um, like I said, in line with the benchmark. And um, we are doing uh, well, and we anticipate that there's going to be a positive return by the end of the year. Um, we, we talked about the private equity fund. We are not fully capitalized, but so far we are doing well in those funds. Uh, Vice President Ligon explained that there's, uh, there's been some delays, administrative delays in getting the conservatively managed portfolio established. However, he reported that uh, the first check, which is about $3 million, is going to be available to be invested in the new fund. The committee also discussed uh, an issue related to potential conflict of interest. So we are asking Raymond James to uh, bring uh, other funds so we can do an analysis compared to the high yield fund that we have. And we will be um, looking to compare that and to make sure that that fund is still in line in regards to its performance and its cost. Um, Madam Chair, that is my report for today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, um, Regent McKeever. Okay. Um, Moving on now uh, to item 5.5, Budget Finance and Audit Committee. Uh, Regent Nahalawa. Forum was present. The committee voted to start with new business and allow the auditors to present the report before the other agenda items. Vice President Finance, Reagan, introduced Jim Witt and Ronnie Delonio from Ernst & Young for presenting the audit report. Riella Cruz from the Office of the Public Auditor also present for the meeting. Change in net position for the year after the audit adjustment was 6.4 million. Major issue of the audit was achievement of the Guam Culture Repository. The university had booked their asset on its books 
and the governor decided to transfer the operation of the repository to the Department of Chamorro Affairs, we opened the question of whether it was being properly recorded. During the year, the governor signed an operating agreement allowing the university to set up the repository for a two-year period, at which time it would revert to the deep back to the Chamorro Affairs. MCN had been thinking the asset would need to be written off, but they found some guidance from the gas fee that allowed the asset to remain on your group book a little longer. They made several adjustments related to the exterior report regarding pension and other benefits. They also highlighted a new gas fee pronouncement that required more disclosures on leases, including a new footnote. They made two additional adjustments to the EOG record. In summary, the University of Guam received a clean opinion for the ninth straight year, and so far, they have not identified any reportable condition for UOG. They recently received some information from the UOG endowment fund. They are reviewing this information and, and doing some internal reviews for some, for some federal grant information provided by the business office. They indicated they think they were able to issue the audit report around the first week of May. Hopefully I can get it in time before I sit down with my friends at the legislature. Anyway, the committee voted unanimously to allow the president to work with the auditors to finalize the report and release it to the public. The meeting was moved back to the old business at this time. Vice President Wagon provided an overall summary of the cash situation of the university. The university continued to struggle through the year with retained, retained expenditures. The university had been meeting with various senators trying to get commitment but a significantly higher budget for fiscal year 2024. He said that because the university doesn't have funds to use of operation this year, the university will start the year off four million in the negative. The university needs these funds plus funds to pay the 22% increase to staff members plus the 3.6 million for faculty salary adjustment for the university will be in a very difficult position. The Department of Administration continues to provide allotments on a regular basis. All payments are up to date. That's budget. Comptroller Martin walked through the financial statement for the period ending March 31, 2023. Revenues were much lower than the prior year due to the absence of high, higher education budgetary funds for the year. The change in debt position was 680000 for the period. It is usually much higher at this time. Not all March expenses were included in the statement. Thus, the statements are tracking to be close to break even. Up here, Bob Kubica reported the budget to actually report. He commented that open spending is constrained due to budget limitations. Expenses will increase as we are res resuming hiring. This is the tracking report that covers the general operations, appropriation, and tuition. He said we are surviving by foregoing expenses that need to be made. This is affecting bidding repairs and hiring and some contracts. So in other words, that's why that's why we need the additional time. At this point, the meeting was way over. It's a lot of time, and, and we offered the remaining the, uh, the remaining items on an expedited basis. The collection report is reflecting, is reflecting that we challenged to cover the target amount, amount of two hundred fifty thousand. Through six months, the virtual office, the versus office, has collected less than hundred thousand, and and they were we are actually able to to do it more in the second half of the year, but they might not be able to reach the target this year. The next report was a procurement transaction report. They showed no expenditures over 100,000 since the last meeting. The risk officer had a presentation ready, but he summarized the report that the risk office manual is nearing completion and the hotline to go live by any day now. This, this concludes the report of the openness, and I would like to move on to the resolution that the BFA Committee has discussed. I'd like to discuss resolution number 23-14 relative to the use of student fee. I'd like to make that motion. Regent McKeever, second. Thank you. Discussion. Okay, thank you. Okay, the the and uh the bid, the, bid, the BFA committee reviewed resolution number 23. .5 relative to the use of student service fee. The, the resolution was viewed and approved by the BFA committee and it also was approved by the president, vice president of finance. And uh, vice president. What, what it is is in 2014, in conjunction with the Good to Great Strategic Plan, 
The Board of Regents approved resolution number 1414, which allowed the university director to proceed to the student services fee to the dormitory. The student, the student service fee is paid by all students and was intended to be used for projects and purposes benefit all the students. However, at the time, the fee generated approximately 250,000 per year in revenue. At that same time, the dormitories have been neglected for years and were in really bad condition. The university believed that as a result of their neglect over the many years, it would be appropriate to utilize the funds to make up for the years of neglect. Five-year plan was provided to the board for projects to be completed at the dorm. Every room was painted, new beds and furniture was installed, bathrooms were refurbished, expenses slowed down after the five years completed. Now, the, 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 the dean of the EMSS made a request to utilize some of the funds for other purposes. Upon review of the resolution 1414, the use of the funds is restricted to the dorm. The university determined it was not appropriate to collect a fee from the students and use this the fee exclusively for the betterment of the dorm. So, so this, uh, re this uh, resolution we have is, is, to, is, to, is to use the funds for other student services, other student um, expenditures. Yes, because we request to utilize the funds for other purposes came from the dean, who is responsible for the oversight of the dorm, we should be allowed to out utilize the funds for that purpose. In summary, the resolution lifts the restriction that the funds can be used only for dorm purposes, allow the funds to be utilized for purposes that will benefit all students, such as student enrichment, streamlining student services, student and place control of the funds into the hands of the president or his designee, which will most likely be the dean, whose funds used will be subject to the concerns of the senior vice president. The, the resolution was amended to reflect, reflect, reflect the fact that EMSD made the request for the use of the funds. We like to, I like to, um, Thank you. Do you have any questions? Yeah. No. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Regent Nahalo. Yeah, so, That's it. Okay. Thank you. So uh, with no further discussion, um, I'd like to take a roll call vote. Regent Malilai, aye. Regent Diaz, aye. Regent Leongarao, aye. Regent McKeever, aye. Regent Provito, aye. Regent Holowa, aye. Maximana, aye. Regent Valencia, aye. Thank you, everyone. Uh, motion carries unanimously. We Five point yeah. five point four. Yeah. Right, and now we have to go back up to the first, the first no. uh, to resolution. Um, be that five point four. Well, uh, yes. So, uh, yes, we need to go back to the um, item five point five point four um, to uh, approve or accept to um, to accept the results of the Ernst and Young. Um, Financial statement. Um, if you can introduce that as a motion. Yes, uh, sorry about that, everybody. Um, okay. A resolution acting 5.5.4 relative to accepting the results of the Ernst and Young Financial Statement Audit and Compliance Audit for the fiscal year and the 30 September 2022. Wait, it is also um, the, the president the power to accept the audit. Okay. Yes, yeah, thank you. Regent McKeever, second. Thank you. Um, I believe that there was already a discussion. Um, and so let's take a uh, roll call vote. Regent Malilai, aye. Regent Diaz, aye. Regent Leongaro, aye. Regent McKeever, aye. Regent Provito, aye. Regent Naholoa, aye. Akumana, aye. Regent Valencia, aye. Okay. Thank you. Motion carries again unanimously. Okay, and I believe that uh, concludes uh, your report. Um, Regent Nahalawa yes. on the BFA committee. Um, okay, let's move on now to item 5.6, uh, executive committee. Uh, there's just a, the update to the 2023 presidential search process. And um, I would like to uh, call on our PSC chair, Regent Diaz, uh, to just give a, a brief update. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the search for the 12th president of UOG is underway. Uh, the names of the three finalists were announced to the campus community and media on April 20. 
if Dr. Anita Enriquez, Dr. Mary Okada, and attorney Eugene Kessenberry. Dr. Okada completed her visits to the campus this week. Dr. Enriquez is scheduled to have her campus meetings next week. And attorney Kessenberry will have her meetings uh, the week after. Additional updates will be discussed in the executive session. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, okay, um, let's move on now to item 6.0. Uh, the endowment foundation update. Uh, do we have uh, Katrina here? Okay, good. Katrina, would you like to um, give your report? Sure. Well, today, Madam Chair Provito and members of the Board of Regents, thank you all for giving me the opportunity to report. We have a few notable fundraisers and events coming up. Um, this Saturday, April 29th, we'll have the fourth annual Emeritus Scholarship Fundraising Luncheon, which will be held at the Hilton Hotel. Uh, June 6th will be a, a whiskey tasting, a Cavalon, uh, Cavalon whiskey tasting uh, sponsored fundraising event to benefit the Taiwan Scholarship for ALS Student Exchange. And uh, after, uh, it's still tentatively uh, scheduled, but uh, we'll be partnering with the University of Guam for the screening of uh, the film Nurse Unseen to raise funds for a new nursing scholarship. This year, we will continue to use donations and sponsor funds to help support the following projects and events. An upcoming Taiwan Guam Austronesian Arts Exhibit at the Guam Museum through the newly established Asia Pacific Studies Center project, which will be held from June 6th to June 10th. Um, PMBA cohorts capstone project Hover X, uh, which will utilize drones to deliver healthcare kits to remote islands, uh, remote areas in Pompeii, and uh, also scholarship awards for academic year 2023 to 2024. Uh, the deadline for students to submit applications is April 30th. It's coming up real quick. So the UOG Endowment Foundation is very honored to be conduits for philanthropy from its donors, and we are grateful for the valuable partnership with UOG personnel in reaching out to these donors. It is their passion for their program that help to draw in further interest from the community. Notable donations and or other payments received in the past couple of months include uh, items to sponsor the Conference for, on Island Sustainability, a special thanks to Dr. Austin Shelton. We've received $25,000 from Guam Power Authority, $10,000 from Blue Planet Alliance, and $10,000 from where? Yeah. Uh, and $10,000 was received from Konfui Group to benefit the Taiwan Guam Austronesian Art Exhibit. A special thanks to Dr. Kwan Ji Chen for his outreach and $5,000 from GTA Teleguam to benefit the Triton Esports Program. Uh, thank you to Ken San Nicholas. $5,000 from Pacific Federal Management to benefit the PMBA Project Hover X. Uh, special thanks to the students of the PMBA Cohort 18. As you interact with these UOG employees and members of these donating organizations, please take the opportunity to thank them for their continued partnership in, sponsor, in supporting the University of Guam. This concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you very much, Katrina. Okay, moving on now to item 7.0, uh, presentation. And I believe we uh, do have um, someone that's going to be making a presentation. It's uh, uh, Dr. Schwab, um, uh, professional professor of, uh, let's see, Social uh, services. Is that correct? Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much. My name is Gerhard Schwab. I'm a professor of social work and I'm a Triton. I'm a graduate of the Tomorrow Studies program. I want to tell you about two very successful UOG projects because they're kind of loosely connected to UOG. You most likely don't know about them, but I want to tell you about them. Also today, I want to tell you, because of the naming of our building, of School of Health, this project would not have been possible without my late Dean Margaret. Right? So it's also in recognition and appreciation of her work. And also President Quace, 
this is your last meeting. I just found out. I also want to express uh, my thanks and gratitude for your service. I I remember when we talked about these projects at the very beginning, and I'm very happy that I, I think it's a very successful story. So the first example is about our website, learningtomorrow.com. We started the website when I was a student. It was a class project. And we simply wanted to create a pleasant online environment to practice tomorrow. Because we don't have family members we can practice. Right? Now, with the help of Senora Rosa Palomo, primarily, over time, we added more and more content. And over the years, it has become a very active platform. We now have 27,000 people registered on our website, wanting to learn tomorrow. And just to put this number in context, the census 2020 reported that we have 21,000 tomorrow speakers. We have 27,000 who go on our website wanting to learn it. And this is, could not have been possible without the OG, right? I mean, it's a, Loosely connected website. It's a student, student driven uh, project that came out of our class. The other, so uh, the other example, if we, if I examine the traffic on our website like last week and I calculate the time of all people that go on the website and learn, that is longer, the time is longer than all UOG students spend in the class. So, so it's, a, it's a very unique, uh, very successful student faculty project. The second example is about Etza Kifinota, Learn Our Language. It's a project we run at uh, St. Francis School together with uh, Commission on Tomorrow Language. We developed the grant and we run it with and for them. Uh, and we got a grant of $900,000 from the administration of Native Americans. The basic idea is very simple. Rather than teaching tomorrow like a foreign language and in a curriculum, we said we transform the school into a learning community where everyone, staff, the teachers, the administrators, and the students, we all learn to speak uh, with each other. And the assessment data that we are collecting now is really amazing, qualitatively and quantitatively. And again, it could not have been possible if I wouldn't have had the support of my late in Margaret Katori Uchima and the stable environment provided by the university. My president, my dean, people in the finance office, and you regents who volunteer to do the work to keep the ship running stable. So both projects, the website and the school, generate very significant results. They both transform the lives of individual people and they both advance our communities. So the open question is whether we as a university over time can institutionalize them, make it part of the system. Um, excuse me, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to cut you short, but we are um, over the three minutes of presentation. Okay. But, but certainly we do appreciate all the work and the efforts that you just have presented to us uh, in, in preserving the, the Chamorro language. So thank you, Dr. Schwab. Thank you. Hey, okay. okay, um, I believe that's it for open presentations. Uh, and now uh, moving to 8.0. Um, Election of officers. And I have my clip notes from our legal counsel. This is going to go 
smoothly. We will be voting for a new chairperson, vice chairperson, and treasurer. So are there any nominations for these positions? Regineas, I nominate the, uh, for the new slate of officers whose term will begin uh, September 1st, 2023. Uh, so first for chairperson, uh, Regent McKeever. Uh, I accept the nomination. For vice chairperson, Regent Yambrero. I accept the nomination. And for treasurer, Regent Nahalwa. The nation. Thank you, Regent Diaz. Um, are there any other nominations on the floor? Okay, if not, um, I'd like to um, ask for a motion to close the nominations. Regent Diaz, I move to close the nominations. Second. Yeah. Regent Nahalwa, second. Thank you, discussion. Okay, if not, um, we'll vote on uh, the motion uh, with a roll call vote, starting with the Regent Malilai. Regent Malilai, aye. Regent Diaz, aye. Young Rao, aye. Regent McKeever, aye. Regent Provito, aye. Regent Holoa, aye. Regent Maximana, aye. Regent Valencia, aye. Re Regent Valencia. Regent Valencia, aye. Uh, do we have your vote for the election of officers? Yeah. Sorry, you can't hear me. Regent Valencia, aye. Okay. Okay, with that. Yeah. Okay. So with that, um, the motion carries. So we have a new uh, slate of officers, and congratulations. Madam Chair, I make a motion okay. to elect yeah. the slate of nominated officers. Yes, thank you. I second. Okay. So, motion to elect candidates in terms of beginning um, September 1st, 2023. And is there, do we have a second? Yes, second it. I'm sorry, can you state your name uh, for the record? Uh, who made the second motion, please? Uh, being none, uh, we take a, a local vote on this motion. Regent Malilai, aye. Regent Diaz, aye. Young Rao, aye. Regent McKeever, aye. Regent Provito, aye. Regent Noholua, aye. Regent Laksamana, aye. Regent Valencia, aye. Can we hear? She's saying yes. She... Okay, thank up. you. Thank you, we got your thumbs up. Okay. <laughs> All right, with that, um, we have all the votes in and we have the motion uh, carried unanimously. Thank you. Okay, I believe that should take care of um, item 8.0. So moving on to 9.0, uh, the adoption of the Board of Regents meeting schedule um, for the academic year. So we need to uh, get a motion. I move to adopt the Board of Regents meeting schedule for academic year 2023 to 2024, subject to any changes during the year. Okay, thank you. Second. Second. Okay, discussion? Okay, there being none, uh, let's take a uh, roll call vote. Regent Malilai, aye. Regent Diaz, aye. Regent Leongarao, aye. Regent McKeever, aye. Regent Provito, aye. Regent Noholoa, aye. Regent Valencia, aye. We got a thumbs up from uh, Regent Valencia. Okay, so with that, um, motion carries unanimously. Um, moving on now to item um, 10.0, executive session. Can I get a motion to enter uh, executive session? Regent Molilai moves to enter into executive session. Second. Okay, discussion. Okay, roll call vote. Regent Malilai, aye. Yes, aye. Young Rao, aye. Regent McKeever, aye. Regent Provito, aye. Regent Naholoa, aye. Regent Laksamana, aye. Valencia, aye. Thumbs up, Regent Valencia. Okay, motion carries. Um, we're now moving into executive session. Thank you. Yeah. Um,
So let me see here. Um, hi, Des. Okay, yeah, Des, can you hear me? We, can, we can hear each other on Zoom, but they cannot hear us in the room. I'm yeah. looking for for um uh looks like they left. Tess, can you can you uh hi, Regen. Close this is Tess. So will you be logging off? Well, I wait, wait, before you do that, you please turn off chat. the YouTube. We cannot turn hear off you. the YouTube, Tess. Tess, turn off the YouTube. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Bit to um, to whisper. Yes. So we need to turn off YouTube more. Stop. Like oh, sorry. Let me use the dark. How do you? Dave, I'm just gonna call Leslie. Yeah. Okay. You cannot uh, participate.